let's talk about three different key demographics that we are seeing in the food and fiber industry, specifically within the farm sector of the food and fiber industry. Those key demographics are the occupation and age of the farm operators, as well as the number of family farms versus the number of corporate farms. What we see is that when it comes to occupation, we're finding that more and more farmers are actually working either off the farm and earning money off the farm or are retired. So, especially for the smaller farms, with farms of sales less than $50,000, most of these operators either work off the farm as well or retired. Another very interesting thing to note is that the retired operators or the retired farmers or the farmers, the operators that have a major occupation other than farming, this might mean that they work in town and that the majority of their salary or the majority of their income comes from a job off the farm. Or maybe their uh, spouse is working off the farm and they're earning the majority of the money that way. So the majority, the major occupation is something other than farming. And within those individuals, we're finding that they own or operate 60% of the farms. So the majority of the farms out there within the United States, the operators are either retired or they work somewhere else as well. And another very interesting thing to note is that these individuals, even though they operate 60% of the farms, they only produce 13% of the value of ag products. So even though they control the majority of the farms, they're only producing a relatively small amount of the value of ag products in comparison to exactly how much how many farms they're operating. So when did farmers really begin working off the farm? Well, according to the United States Census, farmers have been working off the farm since the 1930s. So combining off-farm and on-farm work or off-farm and on-farm income is not a new topic. It's been going on since the 1930s. So what does this mean? What does it mean that farmers and ranchers are holding jobs off the farm? What does that mean for economics in the terms of agricultural economics? Well, what it means is that the local economy and that non-farm jobs and non-farm wages may be just as important as the farming economy as the wages that they would receive from farming, as the income, as the crop prices. Now, non-farm jobs is just as important in many cases as the farming enterprise is by itself. Well, what about age? What about the age of these operators? Well, one thing that we're noticing is that the average age of the farmer has increased. And that average age, in the 1940s, the average age of a farmer was 48 years old. But in the 1977, this age has increased to 54. So we're seeing that the average age of the farmer or rancher is increasing. Another thing to note is that not only are they increasing, but there's a larger percentage of them that are over the age of 65. So in 1968, 17% of farm operators said that they were above the age of 65. That number by 2004 has grown to 27. Another thing to note is that this average age of a farmer is still continued to increase to this day. Another key demographic is whether or not the farms are family farms or corporate farms. So there's been this common popular belief that we are losing our family farms here in the United States. That these family farms are all shifting to non-family corporate farms. Well, that simply is just not the case. We actually know that family farms, family owned farms, are not decreasing as a percentage. Still, there is still about the same amount of family owned farms, family farms in the United States as there was, say, a decade ago. That percentage is not decreasing. There's still the same number of family owned farms. And that most, fam or most farms are family owned. And that most of the family owned farms or organizes individual operators or sole proprietorships. So what we're seeing in the United States is that the majority of farms are family owned. Not only are they family owned, but they're operating as sole proprietor, meaning that there's only one owner, that one family is the owner. Now, there 
is an increasing trend of incorporating family farms. What might be leading to this popular belief that these farms are becoming corporate non-family farms is a rising number of corporate farms. But these rising number of corporate farms are family-owned corporations. So what we're seeing is that a lot of farms are actually becoming incorporated, but it's still 100% owned by the family. Reason they might be doing that is for tax purposes or for future planning of passing the ranch or the farm down to future generations. They might be becoming incorporated, but they're still a family-owned, family-run farm. Another very interesting thing to note about this demographic is that the majority of farms are these sole proprietorships, are individually owned, and they're family-owned individual farms. That being said, farms organize as partnerships or corporations, so they're not these sole proprietors. They account for 40% of the value of production. So even though the majority of farms and ranches out there are still sole proprietors, the ones that are organized as partnerships or corporations, they control 40% of the value of production. Is, does that mean that you should become a partnership or a corporation in order to basically increase the value of your ag products? No, of course not. It just means that these individual family farms, what were just single sole proprietors, have grown so large that they need to now organize themselves as a partnership or a corporation and because of their sheer size, they manage to capture on what we know as economies of size and it allows them to produce a large amount of the value.